Hey, what's going on everybody? If you haven't already checked it out, Goro does have a hangout available, which means the character is in the game and playable at the moment via a trial. So what I wanted to go ahead and do today is actually take a look at his kit and talk about what his best in slot artifacts and weapons are probably going to be just based on what we have access to right now and theory crafters and all the usual stuff. Our testing with him ourselves is pretty limited. We know exactly how his skill and burst work, but in terms of actually just testing number values, we don't get to do much with that because they did just give him a preset weapon and artifacts. But first, I just want to let you guys know that I do go live on Twitch if few days a week at twitch.tv slash braxophone where we play both kitchen impact and other variety games i would love if you guys would go stop by drop a follow and all that all right with that being said let's start with his talents and his kit because this is going to be important to understanding why we're going to build his artifacts and weapons that we do first thing to note is he has a four hit combo for his auto attacks the scaling is really bad honestly a lot of people are probably going to try to build physical damage goro just because it's funny but i don't recommend it as far as his elemental skill he basically drops an aoe that can provide buffs based on how many geo characters you have in your party when he drops it it does a small aoe of geo damage which means he can proc sacrificial bow which just requires you to do damage and then it has a chance to reset your cooldown and it means he can put out a little bit of damage however i'm going to talk about whether or not you should invest into damage with him in a little bit but essentially this is based on how many geo characters you're in your party so this doesn't mean you need to have one more geo character than him two more geo characters than him three it means that you need to have a total of one two or three geo characters in the party which means that your fourth spot can be a flex in any goro team for having one character you get a defense bonus having two characters you get resistance to interruption and having a third geo character gives you geo damage bonus and then this is all within his area of effect and if you leave his area of effect the buff will last for two seconds after you leave the field which means that you can leave the field briefly if you have to but that's only really applicable for things like bosses and stuff that move around a whole bunch generally speaking this shouldn't be an issue and if you hold it you can choose where you place down the skill so if we look at his skill scalings right now it shows that his skill damage is 203 percent at level 11 this is actually very very low and so we're not going to try to focus on his skill damage that much it gives a 392 defense increase at level 11 and this increase will go up based on the level of talent you have Whereas the geo damage bonus and the duration and cooldown will stay exactly the same. It will be worth leveling up his skill just because you'll be able to get the defense increase up though. As far as hyper investing in it or crowning it, you probably won't need to, but it's definitely worth leveling. And looking at his elemental burst now, it's similar to his elemental skill where it's going to create an AoE that buffs your team based on how many geo characters you have. It also creates one crystal collapse every 1.5 seconds that deals AoE geo damage to one opponent. And this doesn't actually require you to be attacking. However, you do look over here, the geo damage is not going to be that high. It's 98% of his defense at level eight. So overall, this is a very very low damage output. The most interesting thing to me about this, aside from the buffs that you're going to give the rest of your team, is that it pulls one elemental shard in the skills AoE to your active character. So essentially, if you use this elemental burst, you automatically grab one of the shield shards that you've generated with Goro, which tells me, combined with the up to three geo units thing, that they actually want you to run an elemental character with Archaic Petra in some instances, which we'll talk about again when we get to the artifact section, because there's a few different sets that work on him. It is worth noting that only one of the general's war banners can be active at a time, which is going to be the geo buff and the defense buff and the resistance buff. All of those things can only be active once at a time. So you don't necessarily need to overlay his burst with his elemental skill, but it's something that's possible to do. Since his elemental skill has a 10 second cooldown and his burst has a 20 second cooldown, you can open up with his elemental skill, use his burst, which lasts for about nine seconds, switch back into him and use his elemental skill one more time. And by that time, the cooldown of this should be basically over. It depends on the exact timing, but it should be very close to where the window isn't super noticeable. And as you can see, a lot of his damage scales off of defense and his elemental burst, which means that defense is a good stat for him to have. Again, we'll get into more detail when we get to artifacts though. And then his first ascension passive makes it so that when he uses his burst, nearby party members get defense increased by 20 25% for 12 seconds. If you have someone like Albedo, you can actually snapshot this defense increase with his elemental skill, which ultimately just leads to higher damage. As far as his second ascension passive, it just increases Goro's damage based on his defense. Okay, so before we get into weapons and artifacts, I do want to talk about constellations just so I can explain everything perfectly that's going into the weapons and artifacts selection. So let's start with constellation one. Constellation one makes it so that when you do damage to opponents within Goro's AoE, the cooldown of Goro's elemental skill is actually decreased. It'll bring it down to about eight seconds. It's mostly just a comfort constellation, but overall, isn't going to change his rotations that much and thus isn't really super necessary. Constellation 2 for Goro is going to make it so whenever you're in his elemental burst AoE, which should be always because it follows you around, its duration is extended by one second when a nearby active character gets an elemental shard from Crystallized Reaction. So essentially that means that you are going to have an extended duration if you activate it next to a Crystallized Shard because Goro is going to automatically pick up one right at the start of the burst. But even more so than that, it's going to make it so that whenever any character on the field, it says any active character picks up a Crystallized Shard, it'll add a second up to a max of three seconds 
seconds. So it basically just makes your burst last up to 12 seconds total. In a triple geo team, as long as your last slot isn't an animal character, you should be able to get the extra three seconds every time. Constellation three is going to increase his elemental skill level by three. Constellation four is actually pretty good, even though the healing is really copium. But essentially what it's going to do is make it so whenever you have two or three geo characters and you have his elemental skill or elemental burst active, anyone within the banner AOE is going to get healed by 50% of Goro's defense once every one and a half seconds. Now, the problem with this is that Goro's base defense is actually very low. So the healing itself isn't that good. But generally speaking, in a geo team where you're defense focused and where you're going to have shield uptime a lot of the time, this healing is probably more than you're actually going to need. This is a near 100% uptime heal if you have Constellation 4. And while it's not going to fix Albedo's Harbinger of Dawn problems, it will help you against Rift Wolves and make it so you don't have to force Noel in a geo team to heal. So while the healing of this will be very, very low, it's still a really solid Constellation in my opinion and one of his better ones. Constellation 5 makes his burst increase by three levels. And Constellation 6 is actually very, very good as well. It's going to make it so for 12 seconds after you use his elemental skill or his elemental burst, it's going to increase the crit damage of all nearby party members' geo damage based on the buff level of the skills field, which essentially just has to do with how many geo characters you have. So Standing Firm is one geo character, just Goro. Impregnable is going to have two geo characters in the team, and Crunch is going to have three characters in the team. So for running a triple geo team at Constellation 6, you get 40% more crit damage on all of your geo damage, which is not as strong as Sara's buff, but it's still really, really solid and definitely an awesome constellation. All things considered, I think that Goro's constellations make him a significantly better unit. Specifically, C4, I think is really great because it makes it so you don't have to force Noel for healing in triple geo and allows that fourth flex spot to not be healer focused. Even if the healing itself is not very strong, it's very good for your team. So now that we've talked about his constellations, I want to move on to our own personal Goro that we have. As you can see, this is this is our Goro. And we're going to talk about Goro's best weapons because this is actually very, very important to playing him. Similarly to Toma, Goro's energy generation actually is very, very bad. It only generates two particles per use of his elemental skill, and his elemental burst is an 80 cost burst. Geo actually doesn't have that many batteries aside from Albedo. Albedo is an insanely good battery for Geo, and you can use Ningguang and you can use Geo MC, but neither of those characters really synergize with Goro as perfectly as someone like Albedo. But to kind of circumvent that, you can use different weapons and artifacts. So funny enough, Goro's trial weapon is the Favonius Warbow, and that's actually going to be his best in slot bow most likely unless they release something else that's going to be really great for battery specifically because you have a chance to generate extra particles after hitting a critical hit at refinement one it gives you a 60 percent chance to generate extra particles when you crit and at refinement five it's going to give you a hundred percent chance to generate particles when you crit so anytime you crit once every six seconds at r5 you will be generating six energy for the character this number can be affected by energy recharge which is really good but the main reason you want to choose favonius warbow over sacrificial bow is because unlike characters that usually use sacrificial weapons like diona or Sing Cho, Goro's elemental skill only hits one single time. It can hit multiple enemies, but so can Sing Cho and Diona. The main deal is that against single enemy content or double enemy content, you're not going to be able to consistently proc the effect of Sacrificial and get the energy particles twice. And on top of that, since he only generates two particles at a time anyways, Favonius can actually really keep up and compete. So for that reason, I highly suggest using Favonius Warbow. And if you don't have Favonius Warbow, if you don't have Sacrificial Bow, there really is nothing else that's like super great aside from Elegy. Elegy has an energy recharge main stat, which will kind of compensate for not having the extra particles. However, Favonius Warbow and Sacrificial Bow both have energy recharge anyways. Favonius Warbow has a lot more energy recharge than Sacrificial, and overall Favonius just ends up being his best option. Sacrificial though will still be his second best option if you don't have Favonius. So now I want to move on to artifacts and talk about best in slot options for Goro, and why you're going to want to choose certain sets. So the first set that I want to talk about is the Exile set, and unfortunately I don't have a 4 star set of this, but Exile does cap out at 4 star, you can't get a 5 star Exile set. You might be thinking, Brex, what in the world are you thinking? This is a 4 star max set, why would you use this? It's going to lower his stats. And the thing is, as we mentioned before, his damage output is not super great, and his energy recharge is not super great, so we have to do our best to compensate for that. One of the best things that you can do with a character that doesn't have a ton of damage or have a ton of battery is to give them one of the sets that has a special 4 set condition that isn't completely stat dependent. So the two-piece set for Exile does give 20% energy recharge, which we've already established is very good. And the four-piece set makes it so that when you use an elemental burst, it regens two energy for all party members every two seconds for six seconds. So a total of six energy for every single party member, which is equivalent to Favonius, except Favonius generates particles, so it's a little bit different. But overall, this is just an extra energy whenever you use his elemental burst, and this will be really valuable to help battery characters like Noel and Ito, who are going to have high-cost bursts that still want to have as much uptime as possible. And overall, it's a very solid option. Many people aren't going to like the idea 
idea of using this set just because it has lower base stats. But because Goro isn't sharing his defense with other characters and is actually just sharing a flat defense rate or 25% defense based on his Ascension 1 passive, it doesn't really matter if Goro's stats are lower. But if Exile isn't your speed, I actually want to talk about Archaic Petro, which is another solid option for him if you're running either double Geo or if you're running triple Geo with a one off field DPS. A lot of theory crafters hate Archaic Petra. I kind of mentioned this in my Albedo video, but essentially Archaic Petra, the four piece set is a Kazuha buff whenever you pick up a shard of the same element as a certain character. So the idea is that you would put four piece Petra on Goro and whenever you use this elemental burst, he automatically collects one crystallized shard, which is going to buff the one non Geo or Animo elemental character in your team. So for example, if you decided to run triple Geo with Beto, whenever you switch to Goro and you use his elemental burst, it would instantly pick up the Electro shield shards and those shield shards would give you a 35% Electro damage bonus for 10 seconds. Now the kick here is that Beto can actually snapshot her burst and you can snapshot that 35% damage bonus on her burst. So it'll actually make Beto get a super strong buff and it's actually very good for that one character. The one caveat to this set is that the character that's equipping this set does have to be on the field to get the shield shard, but because Goro gets it automatically when using his burst, it's not going to be too much of an issue to pick up one element. If you do have two different elements that can create issues, but so long as you're running triple geo or you don't mind picking up a shield shard every once in a while, this set can be very, very good for supporting your main carry. Another set option that you have for Goro is using four piece noblesse and using them as your standard noblesse support. A lot of people don't like this idea because Noel and Ito are both geo carries that you would use with Goro because they scale off of defense and people think attack is completely useless on those characters. While attack is near useless on Albedo's elemental skill, it isn't completely useless on Noel and Ito. It'll still give you a somewhat decent damage buff and it will also buff your fourth party member, which will be very, very good for them. I wouldn't suggest using Noblesse over something like Archaic Petra or Exile, but it still can be pretty decent. And if you do run him with double Geo and then two characters that don't scale on defense, Noblesse becomes even better. And the last two sets I want to talk about are the Husk of Opulent Dream set and then the Emblem of Severed Fate set. So a lot of people think that four piece Husk is going to be really good for him, but as we've already discussed, his damage output isn't super great. So you don't want to try to min max damage on him. However, Goro does need energy recharge. So you can use two piece Emblem and two piece Exile to get 40% more energy recharge, or you can use two piece Emblem and two piece Husk to give him a little bit of a defense bonus that'll help his damage by a tiny bit or at C4 it will help his healing as well because that's based on 50% of his overall defense so using a combination of these two sets could actually be decent as well however I would highly suggest using something like Exile or Petra over any of these other sets that we've discussed because in many different situations these will end up being the best option for him to overall buff your team since he is a support and doesn't deal a lot of damage on his own as far as stats for artifacts there's a couple different stats you want to look at but the main thing is that you want to have energy recharge on his sand we already had enough trouble battering Toma because Toma only generated three energy particles per kick, but now we've even limited ourselves more by making it two energy particles. So we do need to actually stack as much energy recharge as we can. And of course, when I do release my Goro guide, I will talk about exactly how much energy recharge we need, but most likely you're going to need an energy recharge sands. And then you're going to want to use a geo damage goblet and a crit rate circlet. And the reason we're going to choose crit rate and geo damage and build him like a pseudo DPS is because crit rate is going to help us actually proc our Favonius weapon, which will help us generate more energy. So we'll absolutely need that crit rate just to make sure that we can consistently get that energy when we use his elemental skill. Whereas the geo damage bonus is just because there's not really anything better we can put in there unless he's constellation four. However, if you do have constellation four on Goro, you can give him defense in the goblet section, and that's going to help buff his defense to give you more heals over time, which can overall help your team out with sustainability. When Goro comes out, my set that I will be running is going to be four piece exile with energy recharge, energy recharge, defense, because I'm hoping to get him C4 and crit rate to make sure Favonius will proc. Now I want to go ahead and talk about Goro teams and which ones are probably going to be the best teams for him, even though we technically don't know because we I mean we just haven't played Abyss with them and the first thing to know about Goro teams is that generally speaking they're gonna be pretty expensive the one exception to this would be Noelle but even Noelle to make her get her best value needs C6 to increase her damage significantly and generally speaking when I say expensive I just mean costs a lot of five stars or a lot of constellations we're looking at a couple different Geo teams like Ito, Albedo, and Goro Noel, Albedo, and Goro, and even some variations with Zhongli. But primarily, I want to focus on Ito, Albedo, and Goro as a team because I think that this is going to be one of the better ones. Ito is going to scale off of defense, which Goro is going to be able to provide for you. Albedo is going to also get defense buff from Goro and be able to snapshot some of the defensive buffs from Goro with his elemental skill. And then Goro, of course, is just the team we're building around. And then we're also going to have one flex spot that's going to be used for an elemental damage dealer that's not Geo or Anima. And they're going to help generate some crystallized shards, which will help us stay alive. And if we do decide to run Archaic Petra, we'll also buff that 
character fairly consistently. A lot of people are wondering why you wouldn't run a shield unit like someone like Zhang Li instead of an elemental carry. And the reason we're not going to run a shield unit in this team is actually because they just don't really need it. When crystallized shards are made, they are made based off of elemental mastery, and that's going to determine how much overall shield health they have. However, shield health is still affected by your defense. So whenever you, however, your shield's durability is still affected by your character's defense because that's going to create a resistance against enemy attacks, which will help keep the shield up for longer. And overall, with a bunch of characters that are getting buffed defense, your crystallized shards are going to last a lot longer. In addition to that, you also have resistance to interruption with Goro. And if you have Constellation 4, you're going to be constantly healing a little bit. So Goro will be a staple in any sort of geo-focused team that has defensive characters like Albedo, Noel, or Ito. And using that fourth slot for an off-field DPS will also be very, very valuable. Another option that you have with Goro is to run double geo and then two different elemental damage dealers, like maybe a main carry. I use Yoimiya because she's just like my favorite character. And then someone to react to that character as well. So you're building your normal carry team, except you're building two geo supports instead. And in a team like this, you could actually use Goro on Noblesse to help buff your main carry and your off-field damage dealer. In this case, off-field damage dealer could be someone like Fischl, could be Raiden, could be Beto, could be Sink Chol, could be Kaya. There's lots of different characters that it could be. And these two geo units will help do off-field damage as well as create resistance to interruption, which will also be very, very valuable on specific characters. Like for example, Yoimiya will benefit from this a lot because without a shield, Yoimiya will get interrupted a lot and have her combos messed up. And Yoimiya relies on her combo being finished to do the most of her damage. So someone like Goro will help prevent that from happening quite as often and overall be very, very valuable for a team like that. With all that being said, we can assume that Goro is actually going to be a staple in most Geo teams that revolve around defense. So for anything like Ito carry, Noel carry, or something with Albedo, Goro is going to be extremely valuable in those teams. However, my fear with Goro is that he'll probably be pretty similar to Sara, where Sara is okay for buffing Electro teams, but she has very few niches where she actually fits in better than other Electro options. So in cases where you're building someone like Ningguang or GOMC, Goro loses a lot of value. If you're not building a Geo focused team, Goro is not going to be super great, unless he's fitting the same idea as most other Inazuma units so far. Most of them have been very niche. There's a few exceptions, of course. But for that reason, if you're not building a Geo team, if you're not getting Ito, I don't recommend trying to pull just for Goro, unless you just like these ears. They're kind of cute and fluffy. But anyways, guys, that has been my pre-analysis of Goro. My name is Braxophone. If you guys have enjoyed, make sure to like the video. It really, really helps me out in the algorithm. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more Genshin Impact content. I can't wait for Goro and Ito's official release, so I can show you guys how to get the most out of them in an official guide and give you guys a bit of a showcase. With all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you later.